Welcome to the Preschool Transitional Kindergarten Learning Foundation introductory webinar hosted by the California Department of Education in partnership with WestEd. I'm Sarah Neville Morgan, Deputy Superintendent of the Opportunities for All Branch at the California Department of Education. Today, we will provide an overview of the introduction document of the Preschool TK Learning Foundation. This introduction provides guiding principles for the implementation of what we will be referring to as PTKLF, or the Preschool Transitional Kindergarten Learning Foundation, the organization and structure of the PTKLF, and how it promotes diversity, equity, inclusion, and a sense of belonging. We'll then close with how to use the PTKLF and upcoming pre-recorded presentations on it. We'd like to first acknowledge the many people who contributed to the development of the PTKLF. The first is our CDE, California Department of Education core team, including Stephen Profiter, the Director of the Early Education Division, Stephanie Myers, Olivia Damaris, and Lily Moffat, but also include cross-division partners in special education, multilingual curriculum, and state special schools. Then we have our West Ed partners, led by Peter Mangioni and his amazing team of lead writers. We have the State Board of Education, led by Dr. Linda Darling Hammond. We also had 35 child development experts who provided guidance and expertise on specific domains of learning, 12 diversity, equity, and inclusion reviewers, and 23 individuals that contributed to the examples of children demonstrating skills, including language translations of child speech and authentic integration of different cultures. Interest holders representing over 35 early childhood and education organizations and over 100 preschool and TK educators who provided feedback on the revision. So what are the foundations? The Preschool TK Learning Foundations, or PTKLF, describe the knowledge and skills that most children ages three to five and a half develop in a high quality early education program. While in California, we don't call preschool foundations standard, we do view these as the learning goals for children, acknowledging that children come to their early education program with different abilities, and educators should meet children where they are along the developmental continuum and provide scaffolding to support them to reach the next foundation. These foundations are intended for use in transitional kindergarten, in our California State Preschool Program, and other state-funded and federally funded and private preschool programs in California, including school-based, center-based, and home-based settings. The PTKLF covers nine domains of development, which places an emphasis on the whole child and acknowledges how all domains of learning are unique and important for a child's education and development. A new domain was added in this revision called Approaches to Learning, which focuses on skills that help children engage as learners. For example, curiosity, initiative, persistence, and attention. And then we also have social and emotional development, language and literacy, which includes foundational language development, regardless of a child's home language, and English language development for children learning English as a second language. Then mathematics, science, physical development, health, history, social sciences, and visual and performing arts. The PTKLF also is aligned to the kindergarten standards in language and literacy, math and science to be more developmentally appropriate stepping stones between preschool, TK and kindergarten. This plays out not only in the seamless progression in the skills themselves, 
but also in the structuring of the domains and terminology used to more easily see the connection between the two standards. In some cases, there is an overlap between the later foundation and the kindergarten standards, but this is developmentally appropriate and reflects what we know from research on what children can do. I'll now pass it over to Stephen Profiter, the Director of the Early Education Division, to go over the guiding principles for the foundations. Over to you, Steve. Thank you, Sarah. The introduction to the PTKLF outlines nine guiding principles for the implementation of the foundations, which we see as our pillars or values in how learning and development should be nurtured in preschool and TK. Guiding principle number one is that children learn best in the context of supportive, affirming, and nurturing relationships and environments that make them feel emotionally and physically safe and experience security and a sense of belonging. Supportive, responsive, and consistent relationships with adults provide children with a secure base where they feel confident to explore, engage with others, and seek support when needed. In emotionally safe and secure relationships, children have opportunities to explore and follow their interests, learn how to engage and communicate effectively, express their emotions, and build positive relationships with adults and other children. The second principle is that every child is unique and has diverse strengths rooted in their families and communities, cultures, languages, practices, and experiences. We know children come from a wide variety of racial, ethnic, cultural, and linguistic backgrounds and, and life experiences. Through offering responsive and inclusive learning environments, early education programs value, respect, and build on the unique backgrounds and prior experiences of each child. Through experiences in their homes and communities, children gain knowledge and beliefs that help shape how they experience, understand, and interpret the world. Learning opportunities that build on children's cultural, racial, ethnic, and linguistic experiences at home and in their communities bridge the home and early education environments and strengthen children's sense of identity and belonging. Third is that children's home languages are an asset and establish a strong foundation for learning and development across domains. In the PTKLF, we acknowledge that multilingualism is a strength with broad benefits, including linguistic, social, and cognitive growth. Nurturing the home language builds connections with family and community, supports children's social and identity development, and sets a foundation for academic success. Equitable early childhood practices support multilingualism as a long-term goal and an integral part of children's early learning environments. Fourth, family and community partnerships create meaningful connections and support children's sense of belonging. Meaningful collaborations with families are built on respectful, reciprocal, trusting relationships in which families and teachers share responsibility for the well being and education of children. Teachers in early education programs engage families through culturally and linguistically affirming interactions with the desire to learn with and from families about their goals, values, and aspirations. Reciprocal relationships between teachers and families build meaningful two-way collaboration and homeschool connections that support children's learning and sense of belonging, as well as their families' sense of belonging. Fifth, children's learning and development are integrated across domains. We'll touch on this more in a future slide, but I want to highlight here that although the PTKLF are organized in distinct domains of learning and development, the learning of any skill or concept does not occur in isolation. 
children develop skills and con concepts across domains within meaningful, rich learning experiences. Furthermore, the skills or abilities children learn in one domain support the learning and development of skills in other domains. For example, children's growing understanding and use of language helps them learn about new ideas and concepts, express their emotions, solve problems, and connect with others. The sixth principle is that children demonstrate varying strengths and needs in their development and learning across domains. Each child is unique and develops in their own way and at their own pace. Some children may exhibit competencies that go beyond the level described in a particular foundation, while others may need more time to reach that level. As children develop, they may show more advanced competencies in one domain than in another. And how children go about learning also varies from child to child. A child's individual learning path is influenced by many factors, including their temperament, racial, ethnic, cultural, and linguistic experiences, living conditions, and personal strengths, interests, abilities, and dispositions, and whether they experience or have experienced toxic stress or trauma. Effective teaching practices build on individual children's unique strengths and offer learning experiences that are meaningful and adapted to support children's diverse strengths, interests, and needs. Seventh, children have different ways of knowing and may express their knowledge and skills across domains through different means and modalities. Children may demonstrate their ideas, knowledge, and understanding through a variety of modalities and ways of communicating, both verbally and non-verbally. Multilingual learners use their home language, English, or a combination of all the languages they are learning to express themselves and make meaning. Children may communicate ideas and express their understanding, for example, through drawing, modeling, movement, and role play. Uh, children with disabilities may use different communication modalities such as sign language, nonverbal gestures, a picture exchange system, or an electronic assistive uh, technology communication device. The eighth principle is that play is a primary context for learning and creating joyful learning spaces across all domains. Play experiences provide a powerful context for social interactions, creativity, self-expression, thinking, problem solving, and inquiry-based learning. Playful learning experiences from free play to guided play facilitate children's engagement and maximize their attentiveness and self-regulation. Through providing high quality early learning environments, Early education programs value play and offer children a balance of child-led and teacher-guided play activities to promote children's interest and engagement in their learning. And lastly, intentional teaching enhances children's development through planned learning experiences designed to support individual children. Teachers intentionally use their knowledge of individual children's development interests, racial, ethnic, cultural, and linguistic backgrounds to design diverse learning environments that allow for children's meaningful explorations and playful learning. Teachers are intentional in their efforts to support children's learning in areas identified by the PTKLF through child-directed learning and teacher-facilitated learning experiences. They are flexible in accommodating differences in children's learning strengths interests, and needs. I will now pass it to Peter, our partner at West Ed, to provide an overview of the structure of the PTKLF, which is similar to the prior publication, but has some key differences. Thank you, Stephen. Um, what I'd like to do now is um, pick up from what Stephen was talking about and turn to the organizational structure of the new preschool transitional kindergarten learning foundations. Thinking back to the first edition of the preschool learning foundations, the structure is largely the same with this new um, document, the, the preschool transitional kindergarten learning foundations. We have domains, 
For example, here um, on the slide, you can see we have a math domain. That's that's the same as in the first edition of the Preschool Learning Foundations. And then um, the, the foundations are set up so that um, once within a domain, you have strands. And in this example that we're showing on the screen, it's the strand of geometry and spatial thinking. And then within the strand, just like before, we have substrands. And in this particular example, the substrand is shapes. And then finally, within the substrand, we have foundations. And here and you can see in this example that a foundation under the substrand shapes is identifying two dimensional shapes. Once you get to the foundation, two dimensional shapes, then you have the foundational statements. And we have two foundational statements. That's the same as before. We are calling them something different. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, one is um, an early foundation and um, the other is a later foundation. And then you see under, um, under those labels or names of early foundation and later foundation, we have the actual foundation statements um, that apply to each one of those age periods. So this is the general organizational structure of, of the preschool transitional kindergarten learning foundations. And as I said, it's largely, largely the same from what we had before. What has changed is the age levels. You may remember uh, in the um, preschool learning foundations that we had uh, two age levels, as we do in the preschool transitional kindergarten learning foundation foundations. However, the difference is with the preschool learning foundations at first edition, we had the age level at around 48 months or four years of age, and then the second level was at around 60 months or five years of age. So that the idea was that children should be reaching those um, eight um, skills and knowledge levels defined by the foundation. They should be able to demonstrate that the skills and knowledge identified by the foundation at around that age uh, point in time. The shift has been, and this has come from the field, that that isn't really the way development works for children during this preschool age period and transitional kindergarten age period. Instead, um, what we have now are these age periods for the early foundation and the later foundation. So for the early foundation, we have, a, we have an age period that spans from age three to four and a half years. So it's quite wide. And that's to recognize developmentally that children at different times, different individual children, will reach or be able to demonstrate a skill or kind of knowledge or concept um, at a different age within this age period. For the later foundation, the, the again, the age period is quite wide to uh, acknowledge that different children at different points in this age period, we'll be demonstrating the knowledge and skills of a particular foundation. And that age period is age four to five and a half years of age. So this is more developmentally appropriate. It allows for, it allows for individual differences. And um, the other part of this, which I think is important, if you look at this more closely, you'll see that the early foundation goes up to four and a half years and the later foundation starts at four years. So there's an overlap there. There's a six month overlap. That's to recognize that um, it isn't a clean dividing line. All of a sudden the child is acting one way and has a certain set of skills and knowledge and then, uh, and then moves to the, the next one. But rather this is development happening over time and um, it, it, it's a transition as children are developing. The key point uh, for, for people who are uh, for, for the educators, the early educators supporting children's learning is to know where each individual child is along this continuum and support continued development because you want all children, of course, to continue to make progress with their knowledge and skills defined by the foundations. One more point, and that's when we get to the English language development foundations. 
which are not related to age. And that is exactly the way it was um, with the first edition of the Preschool Learning Foundations. With this current document um, that we have the English language domain, the English language development domain in, we have three levels defined, or you can think of them as stages of, of learning English. And this is this focuses this focuses on children who have um, one or more other languages, multilingual learners who have other languages that they've developed in, in, in their home and in their community. And um, now they're learning English. And, and what this measure or, or set of foundations does for you is allow you to look at that development. It gives you a description of what that development looks like across a level of discovering, first discovering English, then in a developing period, and then finally broadening. So um, that's the way um, we are describing that development. And those are the levels that we have for English language development um, in, the, in the foundations. Examples. You, I'm sure if you're familiar with the uh, first edition of the Preschool Learning Foundations, that after the foundation statements, we had examples. And those examples um, really help you gain a deeper and better understanding, a clearer understanding of the foundations. It can, it can clarify what the meaning is of the foundation statement. For any particular level of a foundation, so for example, age three to four and a half years, the early foundation, there are at least uh, three examples. And um, they, they give you very concrete ideas of how children can demonstrate the knowledge and skill or skill or knowledge and skill or concept that uh, uh, that foundation statement is referring to. In this particular example, identify familiar two-dimensional shapes, such as a circle, square, triangle, and rectangle. Some examples and when you read through them and, and you have a chance to look at the document, the, the, the next edition, those examples will um, also include some, some information about how the teacher is supporting the child with, with the particular skill or knowledge that's defined or described in the example for a foundation. That, inf that information about the teacher support can appear in a number of different ways. It might be a prompt that a teacher gives. It could be um, some scaffolding that the teacher does. It could be making a suggestion. It could be commenting on what the teacher, what the child is doing. So what the examples do is it, they help teachers identify where that child is currently operating in relation to a foundation. And, and then begin to use that information in their mind to think about how do I support a child who is at, at this particular level of functioning, who has this particular level of skill or knowledge or um, concept um, development, how do I keep continue to support? It's because the foundations themselves simply are describing what we're supporting. And then um, what, what the key point for teachers is how with curriculum and instruction and other kinds of supports that and interactions that I have with the child, how is that supporting that continued growth, that progress that we see described in the foundations? If we um, look back to the examples um, for the Shapes Foundation, you can see um, a, a very specific example here in bold. And um, but it gives you an idea of the level of detail to uh, that's given in, in each foundation and, and would be cues for teachers to think about what that foundation statement is referring to. Although um, in these particular examples that we have on screen, you don't see um, diversity as such. The examples do provide a, a lot of insight into the diversity of children and the diverse ways that children might demonstrate a skill or a concept or some knowledge that are that's um, uh, described in a foundation statement. 
a lot of times we have children and, and make reference to children using different languages. Um, they may um, be using a, a different cultural frame. Um, the important point that we want to bring out in the examples, and I think if you look across all the examples in the preschool transitional kindergarten foundations, you'll see this, is that there is a diversity of ways that children can use their strengths, the assets that, it, that they have for learning um, <clears throat> to, to demonstrate the knowledge or concept or, or um, skill that's described in a foundation statement. The diversity is not only around the child's experience, but also around um, the context in which the child um, might demonstrate that knowledge or skill. Um, so it could be, for example, a school-based program, it could be in a center, it could be in a, in a preschool, it could be in a home-based setting. Um, it could be outdoors, it could be indoors. Um, in every case, what we want to do is help people see that um, within a context, the child is able to find a way to show what they're capable of doing and uh, for the teacher to be able to observe those, those kinds of ways, those various kinds of ways that children demonstrate these foundations. You'll also find in the foundations what we call, and this is new, educator support sections. These sections are brief, and what they do is they will help the educator with ways to scaffold the learning and development that's described in the foundations in the domains of foundational language development, math, science, social and emotional development, and approaches to learning. So in those five domains, you will find these educator support sections. And as I said, they, they include strategies, ways of scaffolding that teachers can use to support um, this, the early development of skills and, uh, and knowledge that children are developing within, within our um, early childhood programs. So it's going to be very important uh, for teachers because that's always the question that's asked by teachers is, okay, I have the foundations, now what do I do? And so um, to give some idea of different kinds of ways teachers can engage with, with young children, with preschoolers, with children in transitional kindergarten around um, how uh, this, these learning experiences, how the teacher can, can be part of that and can scaffold and support that learning. Um, this will help teachers get started. There, there will be other kinds of resources that are gonna be created to, to provide additional supports um, further up. A big question that always comes up, and this came up with the first edition of the Preschool Learning Foundations, but we address it more explicitly in the, um, this edition with, uh, with the focus on preschool and transitional kindergarten is the interrelatedness of domains. And what we know with young children, actually all of us as learners, we draw from all of our knowledge and skills and um, whether they're in one domain or another to help us with learning in um, other domains. And so that's, that's what we're looking at when we're talking about the interrelatedness of these domains. Uh, let me give you some examples. Uh, one, like we could think about approaches to learning, um, such as the way children express curiosity and interest or engage in problem solving. And when we think about curiosity and interest in learning and how children engage and with, with it, that enthusiasm and, and openness, we know that that's foundational to all learning. We're not just talking about approaches to learning when we're looking at the approaches to learning foundation, but, but we're actually looking at the ways in which strengths that children can draw on in all their learning whether it's in math or literacy or history, social science, language, et cetera. Speaking of language, that's a domain that we know that understanding and communicating through language 
is crucial in learning all in all domains. I mean, you can take a simple thing like counting. The children need language in order to do that. Now, they can communicate with language in a variety of ways. It isn't that they only use English, but they could communicate in another language. Multilingual learners can communicate in a different language and use that as an asset for learning how to count. Likewise, um, a child who depends on sign language to or uses sign language to communicate um, can also, again, use that language to learn the, the, the counting concept and every other concept here representing on the screen with, 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 with these different domains. Uh, we know, of course, that children's physical development will influence how they can engage in learning in these various domains, their social and emotional development. We know that for young children, learning is largely relationship-based. So those social and, and development, those social and emotional development skills that children are, are learning through time in relationship with, with the adults who are teaching them will be very important. It gives them a very solid base for learning in all domains and, and, and accessing that, that kind of interaction learning experience with from adults and other children. And likewise, health is important for learning. Children need to be healthy in order to learn. And so that knowledge and how, how that's supported is an important domain to, to take into consideration. So we can think about all of these domains. There's really good research that shows us that children's learning and in, in the integration of math and science knowledge relates to the development of executive function, which, which relates back to approaches to learning. So again, we, we, can we can see and think about all the different ways that these domains are interrelated. And when we have that in mind, what we want to do is, yes, think about how we're in a moment, in a particular moment, how are we supporting the child's um, skill, let's say phonological awareness with language development and literacy development? But, but how are the other areas of learning being engaged as part of that process? So there's a primary focus, but also we want to, um, as we're thinking about developing our instruction and our curriculum approaches, we want to keep in mind that whole experience of the child. Because ultimately, when we're talking about the interrelatedness of domains, what we're talking about is that whole child. I mean, it's that whole child whose development we're supporting through these foundations. Um, and now um, what I'd like to do is pass um, back um, this, this presentation, this webinar, to Sarah, uh, who will expand on um, the next topics. All right. Thank you, Peter. We've touched on this throughout, but I wanted to provide more clarity on how the PTKLF promotes diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Before we dive into that, I want to highlight how, although I will talk about these components separately in the following slides, we know there is intersectionality between culture, language, and ability. And although great care has been taken, oh, sorry guys, go back, go back. I can do it that way too. And although great care has been given to represent children's backgrounds and experiences in the foundations, we want to note that it is impossible to adequately represent all cultures, languages, and varied abilities in this document, given the rich diversity of young children in California. Foundations highlight the ways in which children's cultural and racial ethnic experiences can inform how children learn and develop and how learning opportunities can build on children's prior knowledge, which creates joy and belonging. Examples throughout the domains reflect multiple racial ethnic backgrounds, cultures, and languages to honor and celebrate diversity in how children might demonstrate their developing skills and knowledge. 
Many examples name specific cultural practices and experiences that children draw on to make meaning of what they are learning and demonstrate their growing skills and development. Examples were also written to reflect the diversity of tribal nations and communities in California and illuminate unique aspects of cultural practices from specific tribal communities. We believe all language varieties that children bring to the early education program should be leveraged as linguistic assets. To reflect this, we also include examples that reference child speech in languages other than English. And speaking of uplifting different languages in an effort to promote belonging, the PTKLF elevate children's home languages in ways that represent the diversity of young children in California. Varied examples represent children speaking entirely in their home languages, as well as examples of code switching that highlight the power of translingualing in children's leveraging of multilingual capacities as resources for learning. In addition, both language and literacy subdomains of the foundations include at least one example in the orthography of the following home languages of multilingual learners, Spanish, Cantonese, Mandarin, Vietnamese, Arabic, Armenian, Punjabi, Russian, Ukrainian, Farsi, Korean, Hmong, and Tagalog. To promote inclusivity, the foundations incorporate universal design for learning, recognizing and accommodating the unique ways in which children may demonstrate their growth regardless of their abilities. The terms communicates, responds, shares, and expresses are used often in addition to the term says, respecting the diversity of communication styles and ensuring inclusivity of any language and any form of communication, including speaking, sign language, finger spelling, pictures, electronic communication devices, gesturing, eye gaze, and so forth. The terms identifies and indicates or points to are used to represent multiple ways of indicating objects, people, or events in the environment. Actions such as drawing, modeling with different materials, role play, and movement are used to describe how children might demonstrate their understanding and skills in ways other than verbal language. This inclusive approach ensures every child's unique manner of engagement and learning is used and celebrated. Examples are also written in language that affirms every child's identity and includes both person-first language, for example, a child with autism, and identity-first language, for example, a deaf child, to highlight how children's identities are represented in the foundations. Recognizing that each child's needs and capabilities are unique, children with disabilities may need additional support, accommodations, and modifications to demonstrate skills detailed in the foundations, such as environmental adaptations, for example, limiting background noise and other distractions, or using seating that is flexible. Adaptations to materials, for example, using a pencil grip or using visual cues, and instructional adaptations, for example, modeling or prompting. I will now turn it back over to Steve to touch on how to use the PTKLF. Here's Sarah. So now that you know the general overview of what the PTKLF is and how revisions have been made, we want to conclude this intro webinar with how the PTKLF should be used. Some of its uses include setting learning goals for children, acknowledging that to do this, you, you first need to meet where the child is on their developmental continuum and scaffold uh, to meet these goals. 
uh, planning learning environments and teaching strategies to support scaffolding, uh, selecting and implementing curricula, designing and using uh, assessments, enhancing preschool to third grade alignment, and informing program continuous quality improvement. So in closing, we wanna thank you for watching this presentation. For a more detailed view of the general introduction to the PTKLF, please read the full document that will be published on the CDE's website. Future pre-recorded presentations will also be published on the CDE website as they are released. To visit the website, um, please go to https colon forward slash forward slash www.cde.ca.gov forward slash sp forward slash cd forward slash re forward slash ps foundations dot asp And finally, thank you. Thank you for listening to today's pre-recorded presentation.